Welcome to AETCM, the emergency medicine channel. 26 year old lady came to ER with complaints of fever, loose tools and generalized tiredness since 8 days. Initial 10 second assessment, patient conscious and oriented and obese command. Primary survey, airway, no airway obstruction. Breathing, bilater bilateral equal chest movement with respiratory rate of 24 per minute and oxygen saturation of 98% in room air. Patient air uh, air is bilaterally equal and no added sounds. Circulation, blood pressure of uh, 110 by 66 millimeter mercury and pulse rate of 96 beats per minute and good peripheral pulses. Capillary filling time is uh, less than 2 seconds. Disability, GCS E4 V5 M6 15 bar 15 and pupil is 2.5 millimeter bilaterally reactive. Exposure, temperature 36.8 degrees Celsius. Adjunct to primary survey, USG. Abdomen and pel pelvis, uh, borderline splenomegaly. No, mm. now why the patient came? What was the presenting complaints? Fever and uh, uh, loose tools. What was the temperature? Normal. 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 Okay. Uh, so, as a part of adjuncts, initially uh, you can plan on doing ultrasound, but uh, not an emergency. Uh, did you feel like, was patient having any pain? She had abdomen pain. Uh, what was the pain score? So, if patient uh, presents with pain, you can ask if, if it is a conscious patient or not, you can ask uh, the patient, uh, can you uh, grade the pain from 1 to 10, with 10 being the severe most. So, you can ask that one. And if the patient is telling the pain is very high, then depending on that, you can give analgesics. And if the patient is continuously vomiting and all, you can give, insert IV candle and give um, whatever medications required for that okay uh, so, uh, so in adjuncts to primary surgery this can be done on later basis also so what is the ultrasound finding splenomegaly okay and ecg was taken ecg mm. was normal sinus rhythm mm. secondary survey 26 year old lady came to uh, came with short febrile illness intermittent high grade fever with chills associated with loose tools 5 to 8 episode and generalized tiredness and had a episode of syncope. For these complaints, she had consulted a hospital at Chennai and treated with IV antibiotics. Her symptoms persisted and in, in hospital and she developed abdomen pain and multiple episode of vomiting. There they have done viral tests which seen positive. She she was uh, she was then admitted at AR Medical Center on July 27th and they did blood investigation. Her hemoglobin was 12.9 and TC is 3200. CRP is 65 and SGOT was 45 and SGPT 28. The next day SGOT and SGPT started increasing. To SGOT was 597 and SGPT was uh, 314. There they did uh, dengue, uh, NS1 and I, uh, IgM, uh, voidal test, uh, lepto, all was negative. Patient was discharged at request and patient came to our hospital. Okay. So, uh, so this patient was uh, outside diagnosed as viral positive uh, um, uh, enteric fever or a typhoid fever. Okay. So suppose this patient comes to our ER. So what will be the differential diagnosis? This is a 26 year old female patient coming with fever, ustules and vomiting. What all differential diagnosis should we keep? Food poisoning. Ah, food poisoning. Like, what is the medical term? Acute yeah, gastritis. If loose stools are gastroenteritis, <coughs> then? Hepatitis. Hepatitis, yes. Meningitis. Meningitis, yes. Anything affecting the abdomen, you can suspect. Uh, then, uh, in, especially in females, you need to think about the mm -hmm. gynecological causes, a urinary tract mm -hmm. infection. Then, uh, gynecological causes also you need to uh, suspect. Okay. So, uh, in, in female, you need to ask for the last menstrual period and the menstrual details also. Okay. Uh, not very important in this case because it's already been diagnosed. Okay. Allergy history. No significant allergy history to any drug or dust. Past medical history, no history of tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, hypertension or diabetes mellitus. There is no significant past history relevant for the presenting complaint. 
general examination patient was conscious and oriented averagely built and averagely nourished no pallor it was sinus uh, clubbing lymphadenopathy pulse rate of 96 per minute and respiratory rate of 24 per minute and blood pressure of 110 by 66 mm mercury oxygen sa saturation was 98% in room air on systemic examination the uh, gastrointestinal tract uh, per abdomen was soft non tender bubble sounds plus no palpable organomegaly respiratory system normal vesicular breath sound cardiovascular system s1 s2 heard no murmur uh, central nervous system no focal neurological defect or no meningeal irritation lab investigation okay so uh, in a patient so we all think uh, by this point we know that it is a case of um, enteric fever okay so uh, when uh, what all things specifically we we need to look in each system and in general examination there can be some rashes that is called as rose spots which is seen in typhoid fever which is mostly seen in the body trunk area chest area and all it will be like uh, pink color spots and when we touch it it will blanch completely but uh, since the patient presented on the eighth day this might not be there it will be there in initially to uh, second to the fifth day these rashes will be there that we will have to look for then uh, all the system when we are examining we need to check for the complication secondary to the enteric do you know the complications of enteric fever cardiitis yeah from head to toe everything can be there so there can be meningitis features can be there then there can be uh, encephalitis and delirium uh, muttering delirium or coma vigil we say patient will be very irritable patient will be um, trying to pull the bed sheet trying to uh, pull from the hand something something patient will be feeling that something is crawling like that so delirium will be there then we will have to uh, check for the otitis media such infections can be there then pneumonia can be there carditis can be there so this patient ah uh, seizures can be there yes especially in children seizures can be there so um, you were telling that this patient's heart rate is 96 what is the significance of heart rate in typhoid relative bradycardia will be there so relative bradycardia doesn't mean that patient will be in bradycardia relative bradycardia means compared to fever there will in fever there will be 10 per beat uh, increase in heart rate will be there. that won't be there so relative bradycardia so this patient's heart rate was around 96 percent so he is not going uh, she is not going to tachycardia so that means there is a uh, that expected tachycardia is not there that's why it's called as relative bradycardia so uh, that should be if at all this patient is having tachycardia because a typhoid patient is having tachycardia then that is a bad sign it can be because of any uh, myocarditis feature or it can be because of any associated sepsis or gi perforation these things and all so tachycardia in typhoid is a bad sign okay then there can be pneumonia then uh, there can be myocarditis these things then in the abdomen what all complications can perforation. perforation why perforation after if uh, we are not treating the patient for more than 3 weeks uh, mm. intestinal perforation yeah so what is the feature of this um, typhoid is that it usually uh, enters the body how it how it will enter the body what is the source of infection peak oral route it will enter the body and it will start directly start spreading inside the body some of the typhoid will be dormant inside the gall bladder otherwise it will be spreading and mostly it will be in the pears patch and this pears patch will get inflamed inflamed and it will it might perforate so perforation is one uh, drastic complication then that can cause intestinal hemorrhage then hepatosplenomegaly then hepatitis can be there nephritis can be there then coming lower down in males there can be orchitis features then arthritis osteomyelitis this much complication should be there so when we are examining any system we need to look for the complications that can develop because of that okay in this case we did a uh, uh, rapid uh, cart test igm and igg was positive mm. yeah. what was the um, uh, cbc crp and the Uh, normal normal okay yes. can it be normal always no uh, voidal will be pos uh, high uh, no 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 wbc will be high uh, 
uh, usually in bowel bacterial infection what we see is increased uh, wbc counts neutrophils will be high but in wide uh, this thing uh, in typhoid fever sometimes there can be leukopenia so sometimes the total count will be low so we might act, we might be thinking it is something like a viral fever so leukopenia can be there then then what other investigation should be sent so complete blood count blood. we should send crp might be elevated procalcitonin will it be elevated or not uh, elevated. since it is bacterial infection it will be elevated, elevated. then what else elevated. to send blood culture blood culture ah. how to diagnose it as viral so initially in the first week blood culture might be positive towards the third week only vidal will be positive that second week time sometimes bone marrow or something only will be positive so uh, so initially we need to do it by a blood culture mm. then what other investigations should we see urine routine urine routine what what finding will we see in urine routine you we can rule out a urinary infection then bacteria back uh, in typhoid per se there can be proteinuria Th that can be seen in urine then stool culture can be done yeah stool culture can be done stool culture also will be positive after uh, one or two weeks then other than that we have to uh, rule out any complication which are uh, we have already discussed so mm. we have to look for any ca cardiac uh, mm. features also then uh, cardiac uh, cardiac exams have to be sent mm. and also then we can uh, already we have done the usc abdomen and other than that we we'll, uh, we can rule out any uh, uh, nephritis uh, so rft can be sent and mm -hmm. electrolyte abnormalities uh, can be there because it's what was the abnormality in this patient's lab outside yeah uh, lft was lft, LFT. so uh, mostly in uh, when we are looking this patient's liver function test sgot sgpt will not be as i as for a hepatitis not be in thousands range will will be in somewhat in hundreds range somewhere between 100 to 900 that range it will be there so uh, leukopenia we need to keep in mind leukopenia with the bacterial infection along with that urine there can be proteinuria then depending on the organ complications we need to see and if at all we are looking for the liver function test it will be sgot sgpt will be elevated okay in this case we treated with uh, iv antibiotics Mm. So, uh, if suppose we are uh, uh, diagnosing a typhoid fever, patient is asymptomatic, completely asymptomatic. What will be the management be like? Only supportive treatment is required. Uh, replace the fluid and electrolytes and antibiotic water started for the treatment. Ceftriaxone was there. What was the dose? On gram IV BD. BD was started. Okay. Mm. Then. And for uh, patient was discharged with a uh, give. Uh, we gave a uh, tab uh, cefixim 200 mg BD. Mm. for one week okay so uh, if the patient is uh, coming to us and patient is stable and is not requiring admission then such patients we can give um, oral tablets like uh, ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin can be done that fluoroquinolone uh, category can be given or we can give third generation uh, cephalosporin like cefixim and all or if we are admitting we can give uh, the ceftriaxone uh, or cefotaxim or chloramphenicol these drugs can be given and if this patient is admitted to our hospital or discharge to home what precaution should we ask sanitize ah sanitize uh, we should uh, there we can be there can be carriers yes so the same uh, toilet should be avoided by the other people. Ah, other people so it is fecal oral route <coughs> so we should avoid contaminated food then we should uh, Till the patient improves, the patient should be given a separate toilet or try to reduce the uh, infection through the uh, toilet seat. Okay. Then, then uh, carrier, suspected carriers should be treated with ciprofloxacin up, uh, up to 6 weeks. They will have to get be treated with that. Otherwise, they will spread to other people. Okay. Then, typhoid vaccines are also there. Okay. Okay, and then uh, this patient Vidal was positive, Vidal no? Outside. Was positive. So, what test is Vidal test? Uh, hemoglobin test. Mm, hemoglobin. So, it is checking for the antigen or antibody? Antigen. Antigen. So, which all are the antigens? O and H. O and H antigens are there. Which is significant? H is. O is significant. Actually, uh, it is like a, a O. A 
is coming uh, as a liposaccharide and H is just like a flagella. So, H will be falsely positive in case of uh, infection with some other salmonella or uh, uh, secondary to taking vaccine and all. H will become positive. So, O is the one which is significant in this. Okay. And then how was the patient? Patient is better as symptoms as suspected. Okay. Thank you.